Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is Friday, August 28, 2020, and I'm back for another video. Today I want to talk to you guys about the results that I was able to get with my Easy Beasy Seasoning Stick that I bought last week, or that arrived last week, and uh, as you remember the video where I stripped my Blacklock skillet, and I redid it with the Easy Beasy Seasoning Stick. I also have a couple other uh, skillets here from my own collection, and a couple that I want to sell. So I had a couple that I totally stripped, and uh, actually three that I totally stripped, two I'm going to sell, one you know in my collection, and two I just wanted to add a coat of seasoning because I didn't like the way it looked. It's kind of look, Sometimes it looks funny when you cook certain things on it until you've really used it for a number of years, and I've only been collecting now for about four years, so no, I haven't had these for a number of years. And I also have a few new pickups over there. Uh, that I got this week also that I want to talk to you guys about. So anyway, before I get into all of this, uh, if you're new to my channel, I'm one of the um, a few lady, uh, lady cast iron um, channels on YouTube. I have over 120 videos of all kinds of uh, subjects matter on cast iron. I basically am into buying and collecting and selling vintage cast iron, knowing what to look out for, knowing and what not to buy, identifying your old cast iron, identifying something that might be a fake, um, you know, how to restore it, how to strip it, how to clean it, how to season it, how to cook in it, how to maintain it, everything cast iron. So if you're new, new to me, please give me a, a sub and a thumb up on the video. Click the bell to be notified of future videos so this video will be recommended to more people like you uh, that like to watch this kind of content. It really helps the channel, so give me a thumb up and also leave a question or comment below because I really enjoy interacting with you. Um, so anyhow, that is what my channel is mainly about. Occasionally I'll put up a prepping video or some other type of video, and um, that's what, what it's about. So now we're going to get into what, what I did with the Easy Beasy Seasoning Sticks. So I'm going to go ahead and put the tripod down here, and you can see uh, what I've got going on here. And for starters, uh, I had did a number of skillets. I'm only showing you five of them. This one here was free. Uh, it was just thrown in a lot of 10 skillets that I bought at a flea market at the end of July. It's on that video. It was really rusty. So I stripped it. It still has some carbon deposits there on the sidewall. But this is two coats of the Easy Beasy. And it really has made this skillet come along. There's a little bit of pitting there on the side. But it's really not going to influence the cooking. This is very smooth. I'm still going to add maybe three more coats of uh, seasoning to it just to make it look the way I want. There's still some rough spots uh, with the uh, underlying pitting going on with all that rust. But it's smooth. It's under control now. And it's going to make somebody a great cooker. So this is a number three Wagner. And you can tell because of the handle, it's ribbed going into a flattened triangle into the side wall. The font says six and a half inch skillet. It's got a maker's mark of a, I think that's a Q, and that's a Q. So anyways, uh, interesting skillet with a Q on it. <laughs> Figure that one out. <laughs> anyway, that is a Wagner number three, and I'll mark Wagner. Next up is a number seven. This is a small block logo, uh, Griswold. That I've had in my collection for a while. I stripped it a couple of times. The first time I still had a bunch of black residue carbon that wouldn't come off, so I went ahead and applied my updated seasoning techniques. And so I went ahead and applied another coat of Easy Beasy on this. And then since then, I've cooked a couple of times with it. And this is just super terrific. It's nonstick, it's a wonderful, wonderful skillet. So, anyways, this is a. Uh, Late handle, grooved handle, small block logo, number seven, Griswold. It's my go-to for omelets. You can see the thin sidewalls. But I was very happy with the easy breezy seasoning stick on that. This one here is a number 12 modern, I'm sorry, a 12 inch, but number 10 modern lodge. The bottom was fine. The sides kind of had lost their seasoning because what I had used before. And I went ahead and put another coat of a seasoning on. This time I used Easy Beasy and it really starting to cover that ugly part up on the sidewalls. I still may throw another coat or two on when I'm seasoning other skillets. I may throw this in with it. Um, as you can see, 
I've got a very large oven with three racks. Actually, we're going to have pizza for dinner, so I'm actually heating it up. But this lodge did very, very well. So we're going to go ahead and put these guys. These, these are, this one's going to be sold when I get it done. So I'll go ahead and put it over here. These are going to go back in, in my collection, so I'm going to put them to the side. And then here is also in my collection. This is a black lock chef skillet, 96. You can see there, USA 96, see how neat that looks? And here's the black lock. It's made from Lodge Manufacturing Company. I did not like the seasoning when it came out of the foundry. So I stripped it and started over, and I still have some of the original seasoning on here I really couldn't get off, but it looks so much better. And the Easy Beasy Seasoning Stick did a fantastic job on that. So very happy. Very, it still has a little bit of a sandy finish, but it's excellent for omelets and stir frying because of the sloped sidewalls, and that's why I got it. Because you just don't find those chef skillets every day. Okay, next up is last up for the Easy Beasy seasoning stick is this number 12 Griswold small block logo pan with an assist handle. Well developed pour spouts. You can see that there. A nice teardrop handle, number 12. And we're going to go ahead and flip it over on the back, and it's very smooth. It had three coats of Buzzy Wax, and then I went ahead and put three more coats of Easy Beezy on it. Easy Beezy, actually, so you guys know, is beeswax as an emulsifier or a bonding agent. Then you have your, your avocado oil and grapeseed oil with high smoke points, so it really dries. On, it bakes onto the cast iron and dries. That's why I love it so much. Uh, the seasoning is so durable. It'll last longer than you know other types of oils out there especially flaxseed. Crisco's good, but this is a little bit better, I think. So that's how it looks. Okay, okay I'm going to get it cut off there. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but there is the Griswold logo, and there is the handle. It's, this is a, it has a heat ring on it, and it also has the teardrop well-defined handle ribbing going into a flat triangle, just like the Wagner. Um, but most of these Griswold small block logos did not have heat rings. They only had heat rings if they were 12, a number 12, which means it's 13 and a half inches skillet or larger. So anyway, the Easy Beasy did a fantastic job. So we're going to go ahead and put this skillet over here. And I'm going to go ahead and list that and list this one when it's done. And I also will be back and I'm going to show you uh, what I picked up this week. I did not go to the flea market this week. I decided instead to go to the antique mall, and that was an interesting experience. So I will show you that in the next part of the video. Okay, guys, I am back with my finds this week. And I was, as I was starting to say in the last clip, um, did not go to the flea market. The last time I went, they had absolutely nothing. Rain was in the forecast this week. It's been kind of raining off and on all week. I decided not to bother. It's not real close to, to me. I mean, I can do it. I can go out and back and get it done in the morning. But still, I didn't want to go drive all the way out there and not find any vendors there. So what I did instead was I went to an antique mall, and I was actually looking for a large skillet. And... Um, that large skillet turned out to be a uh, knockoff, a Chinese knockoff. It was a number 14 or 15 uh, skillet, and I will show you that. Uh, if not in this video, in another video if you want to see that. But anyway, I ended up picking up, I didn't pick up that one. I uh, put out the feelers to my Facebook group, um, Cast Iron Group, and they pretty much confirmed that it was a knockoff. But what I did get was this uh, Dutch oven with the bale handle. It's an antique, it's an old lodge. You can see that there on the uh, lid. It has the ARC logo, and it has the uh, raised number on the lid. It's number eight. It's got a like a line here, that's a wave line. That was from the casting process. And what they did back in the day is they would have a cauldron of metal that they would be pouring into several molds at once. And sometimes they would go ahead and pour and then finish pouring and as one side would start to 
to cure or set before the other side uh, had done that, and so you would get a wave line. I think they gave, they give these old pieces a lot of character, but it is a lodge. It's probably made in the early 1900s from my initial research, and I got this off of Facebook. There's a little V there, which is a maker's mark. It's got the really cool um, indentations on the lid. So that's the lid. It's kind of good. And then the inside of the pot it has some rust and some crud. Um, it's got some movement. It's uh, it kind of spins around, but with the lid on it, it you know, it is not that bad. And it's you know, it's hard to say how it's going to end up. But I thought I was going to pick it up, and the price was only about thirty bucks. Uh, this was a Facebook Marketplace transaction. Somebody in the next town over. So I just went over to her place. Um, I didn't have any bad vibes, so I just met her at her place and uh, went in. Her husband was there and uh, offered them, uh, tried to negotiate on the price, and they were pretty firm. They actually had this priced at 60 bucks, and there's the, the bottom, and it may spin around because there's a buildup right there in the middle. So it's hard to say. I just wanted to take a chance on it, and for $30, it's an old antique a Dutch oven with the bale lid. You don't find these every day. These are very rare. So I uh, got that piece and I need to strip it. So one reason why I'm doing the video. So we're going to go ahead and, and move that out of the way. Uh, the next piece uh, that I got at an antique mall, that's the one I went down to get the uh, large skillet that turned out to be a knockoff. But this is actually a chicken fryer. It has an, a, a unique handle. Doesn't have any markings. But, I put, again, I put it out to my Facebook group, and they pretty much thought, I'm going to go ahead and turn the other light on. It's kind of dark in here. Let's see if you can see a little bit better. But it's a chicken fryer, and it has a really nice heavy lid that fits perfectly. And this is the markings on the lid, and again, it has a V maker's mark, or a, a mold mark, I think that's what they are. Uh, on the inside lid. It's really super heavy, the lid. And from what I understand in my Facebook group, people are looking for these lids just by themselves. It's a number, I think it's an eight or a nine. It's hard to tell. I'm going to have to measure it and do a little bit of research. Um, but it doesn't have any numbers on it. It's got an external heat ring, so that makes it uh, really old. I think it's 1910 to 1930. I think, if I remember correctly. It's got a little bit of movement, but when you put the uh, cover on, it uh, still has some movement, but doesn't seem to really matter. But again, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, strip this, and we'll see what we got. But this one looks like it's gonna be great to cook in. I may keep this one and flip another one that I have, but it's probably got three inches uh, side. The only thing I don't like about it, and can't be perfect with these old pieces. It's got a little bit of pitting inside the uh, you know pot here, but it's not going to influence the cooking. The cooking is mainly done there. Pitting, uh, unless it's really, really bad, really doesn't impede cooking. So this one is going to be a great one, but I wanted to show it to you in a video so I can go ahead and get it into the lye, bank, lye bath. So we're going to go ahead and move this one. It's pretty heavy. And finally, a really nice score I got was they even wrapped it up for me because I wanted it to keep, keep it good, was this little guy. This is a chef skillet from Wagner. It's got the thumb rest. It's got the open handle at the end, which is kind of trademark Wagner. And this one actually has very little movement, which is unusual. A lot of these do have some movement. Um, it is a, you can kind of see it there. It says Wagner Ware Sydney O. It is a, I think it's a 9-inch chef, chef skillet, 1386A. These are sought after by collectors. So this one will also be stripped. It's got the nice milling on the surface. I am super excited about this one. This is, a, you know, I've got one listed now. I sold one to one of my subscribers, and uh, that one was pretty valuable. I think this one rivals that, if not more. 
on this this one. That looks look it'll look nice when it's fully seasoned like that. But yeah, I got that one and paid a pretty good. Uh, actually, I got a pretty good price on it. But it was an antique mall, so you do have to pay up a little bit more than twenty dollars for those each. But it's worth it because you like to have a nice piece of cast iron. It's not very heavy either. That'd be great. It would sit in my smaller burner here. It'd be great to stir fry vegetables. Anyway, so that's what I got at the, uh, uh, these were at the flea market and the Dutch oven uh, was a private Facebook marketplace transaction. And, you know, I, I go with my gut feel. If I don't feel real comfortable, was, the other person was a woman. So, you know, I'm going to go out to look at another skillet tomorrow. They've got, they said they had a couple others they needed to, to get rid of. Uh, it was her husband's grandfather's, I think, is what she told me. So uh, I'm saving history, but they, they don't use them, and they need the money. So there you go. All right, guys, uh, please give me a thumb up if you'd like to see more videos like this. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. Leave a comment or question below. Thanks for watching, guys, and go make it a great day.